In this video, we're going to concentrate on something which is pretty essential to understand if you're a plumber, and that's the properties of water. Water covers about 70% of the Earth's surface, and we're probably all familiar with the water cycle because we were taught it at school. You know, the diagram of rain falling, collecting into lakes and seas, and then evaporating into water vapour, rising into the atmosphere, condensing because of the cold, collecting into clouds, and then falling as rain again. That one. Water is composed of water molecules, and a single drop of water contains well over a hundred million billion molecules. Each water molecule itself is made up of atoms. In the case of water, two hydrogen atoms are bonded to one oxygen atom. And that's why you may hear water occasionally referred to as H2O. We explore the subject of atom structure in much more detail in the basic electricity video on the Learning Lounge. Rain is the purest natural form of water, but one property of water is that it's a solvent. Solvents are any substances that can dissolve another substance, such as gases and solids, and hold them in solution. Essentially, the molecules of the dissolved substances are suspended by the molecules of the solvent. So, for example, when you make a cup of coffee, the water is suspending the dissolved coffee and sugar and milk. and then holding those molecules in solution. With rain, therefore, it's likely to dissolve some part of whatever it runs across. So, for example, by the time rain ends up in a reservoir, it usually dissolves gases from the air, such as nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide, plus, of course, any substances in the soil and the like. Normally, this will not affect the water's suitability for drinking, and water which is for drinking is often described using the word potable, which is a word with Latin origins, essentially meaning to drink, and is related to words such as potion. Potable is one classification of water. You'll also hear terms such as hard and soft being used with regards to water type as well. Rainwater is naturally soft, which means that detergents will lather very easily, meaning that less detergent will be required than if the water is hard. Hard water is very common in areas where rainwater has passed through chalk or limestone in the underlying soil, essentially dissolving calcium and magnesium into the water solution. Unfortunately, when hard water is heated, for example in a kettle or a central heating system, the calcium or magnesium particles in the water can collect together to cause lime scale, which over long periods without treatment can seriously clog up a hot water system and reduce its efficiency. Because of the calcium deposits, hard water tends to be more alkaline than soft water, which can be slightly acidic. The alkalinity, or acidity, of water is measured on the pH scale, where the pH stands for potential hydrogen. Now, Without trying to get too chemistry-focused here, something which has a high concentration of hydrogen ions will be highly acidic and have a value towards the lower end of the pH scale. In water, the extra hydrogen atom attaches itself to a water molecule, giving it the chemical formula H3O. A solution which is low in hydrogen will be towards the higher end of the pH scale and be more alkaline. As both acids and alkalis can be corrosive, there is a risk that plumbing components could be damaged with long exposure. As we can see, the pH scale is numbered 0 to 14. Let's stick some common items on there. Battery acid will typically have a pH of 0. Lemon juice, again acid, a pH of 2. Neutral, which is where acidity and alkalinity are balanced, is about pH 7. Eggs have a pH of 8, making them slightly alkaline. And household bleach tends to be about a pH of 13. It's worth noting that some types of fish start to die at only a pH of 6. Frogs, tadpoles and some insect larvae die at a pH of 5. And most, if not all, water life will be dead by a pH of 4. 
If you have to deal with older plumbing installations, you might encounter lead piping. This will always need replacing, as if water is slightly acidic, it can dissolve the lead into the water solution and cause lead poisoning if it's drunk.